This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We end today's show in Australia, where press freedom groups are sounding the alarm over a pair of police raids on journalists. On Wednesday last week, Australian federal police swept into the headquarters of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation in Sydney, reviewing thousands of documents for information about a 2017 report that found Australian special forces may have committed war crimes in Afghanistan. ABC executive editor John Lyons spoke on his own network just minutes after police served a warrant naming a news director and the two reporters who broke the story. They have downloaded 9,214 documents, I counted them, uh, and they are now going through them. They've set up a huge screen and they're going through email by email. It's quite extraordinary. And I feel, as a journalist, I feel it's a real violation because these are emails between this particular journalist and his boss, her boss, it's drafts, it's scripts of stories. Um, I've never seen an assault on the media as savage as this one we're seeing today at the ABC. And the chilling message is not so much for the journalists, but it's also for the public. Wednesday's raid on ABC, that's again Australian Broadcasting Corporation, came one day after police in Melbourne, Australia, raided the home of Annika Smethurst, a reporter with the Herald Sun newspaper. Police served a warrant related to Smethurst reporting on a secret effort by an Australian intelligence service to expand its surveillance capabilities, including against Australian nationals. Australia's acting federal police commissioner, Neil Gagan, defended the raid, saying journalists could face prison time for holding classified information. No sector of the community should be immune for this type of activity or evidence collection more broadly. This includes law enforcement itself, the media or indeed even politicians. For more, we're joined by two guests in Australia. With us from Brisbane is Peter Gresta. He is the UNESCO Chair in Journalism and Communications, University of, Green of Queensland. He's founding director of Alliance for Journalist Freedom. He was imprisoned for over a year, for 400 days in 2013 to 14, while covering the political crisis in Egypt. And joining us from Perth, Australia, Joseph Fernandez is with us, media law academic at Curtin University, Australia's correspondent for Reporters Without Borders. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, Joseph Fernandez, let's begin with you. Lay out exactly what happened and when it took place, all the details as you know them, both the rating of ABC and the journalist's home. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, the two raids happened within uh, 48 hours of each other. It began with a raid on Annika Smethers' home. You have introduced her. At her home, uh, the Australian Federal Police spent seven and a half hours going through every nook and cranny of her belongings, uh, including uh, the rubbish bin outside the house, uh, and they sought to access uh, her uh, email uh, messages, phone messages, um, and anything they could lay their hands on, um, including um, what she might have uh, kept away in her undies drawer. Um, Annika obviously was very um, uh, traumatized by this, uh, but she has uh, held her head up high uh, in the knowledge that uh, the story about which she was being investigated was really something very arguably and very strongly in the public interest or of legitimate public concern. The second raid the following and day— And that story was? Sorry, can you say that and again, that please? And that story was, Joseph? The story was that there was a, a discussion, a discussion about a plan to expand uh, state surveillance that would have uh, possibly included surveillance of ordinary citizens. Uh, and uh, this was quite an unprecedented idea, and the objective of a, such a plan was obviously going to be justified on the premise of protecting national security. The second raid uh, happened at the headquarters of the National Broadcaster, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation in Sydney, 
and uh, police officers uh, entered uh, the premises armed uh, with a warrant, uh, with an exhaustive uh, inventory of things that they were looking for. And as you have noted, they uh, scoured uh, hundreds and thousands of documents and materials and left with uh, a small collection of materials uh, in a sealed package uh, with the agreement not to use them until a uh, uh, possible challenge uh, is considered in the days ahead. And Joseph Fernandez, uh, these raids coming within a day of each other, was there any coordination or were, uh, were these related uh -huh. in any way? That's an interesting question. One of the first uh, questions that sprung uh, into people's minds was whether uh, they were related, whether this was instigated by the government. The prime minister uh, quickly moved to distance himself and his government from the raids, uh, claiming that the two agencies and uh, the police were acting entirely of their own accord. Um, and the police themselves uh, are on record as saying that the two events are unrelated. Um, and so it's left to be seen, um, you know, whether uh, new light will be shed on the real circumstances that uh, led to these raids. It's quite hard to accept without inquiry as to whether there was absolutely no notice uh, given, uh, whether informally or uh, formally uh, to the bosses in government. And for people to understand, I mean, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation is the leading broadcaster throughout the entire country of Australia. I wanted to bring Peter Gresta into this conversation. We had you here in our studio after you were imprisoned for well over a year by Egypt with your two Al Jazeera colleagues who were working with Al Jazeera at the time. You certainly knew what it meant to be arrested, um, to not have rights, not to be even told at the beginning why the Egyptian authorities were holding you. Now you see this situation situation in Australia. And I was wondering if you can talk about the laws around uh, press freedom, if you have them in Australia. Amazingly, in this warrant, um, <clears throat> the warrant gave the police wide-ranging authority to view, seize, edit and destroy virtually any document it saw fit. Yeah, that's right. Look, the, there are a whole host of questions in there, Amy, but let me deal with the very beginning of it. And that's the way I felt when I heard about the news, because it did, I mean, even now I can feel the, 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 my skin pricking up, um, thinking about the raids and what that would have felt like, because I know exactly what it was like to have agents burst into your room looking for evidence um, and, and, and all the confusion that surrounds that, the outrage that surrounds that. But I never really honestly expected to see it take place here in Australia. Um, and it seems to me that even though I'm not suggesting Australia is about to become an authoritarian state like Egypt any time soon, I think that we are being pushed in the same direction by the same kind of imperatives around national security, the prioritising of national security over um, the human rights and democratic rights of citizens, largely because it's much easier to, to make the political case for national security legislation, particularly when you see attacks in the streets and the, and, and the consequences of that, but much harder to make the more abstract case for um, human rights um, and citizens' rights, freedom of speech, freedom of the press and so on, um, until you see what that means in practical terms. And, and, and that's what we saw last week with these two raids. Um, I think it's very, very concerning to me, and I'm, 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 I'm deeply worried. Now, as you mentioned, we don't have in Australia any explicit protection for press freedom written into the law, nothing about freedom of, the, of speech. Australia has no Bill of Rights. Um, all we have is an implied right of political communications that the High Court um, decided uh, was there as a as a function of our democracy. They said that we live in a, in a representative democracy and you can't have an effective representative democracy without political communication. Therefore, that right is somehow inferred in the Constitution. But without anything like the First Amendment in the United States here in Australia, without any explicit protection for press freedom, what we're seeing is a lot of scope for our legislators to draft laws that really intrude on press freedom in all sorts of deeply troubling ways. 
um, that make it much harder for, for journalists to protect their sources, make it much harder even for journalists to contact sources within government. And so what we're seeing is a vast web of, of interconnected national security laws that in all sorts of ways make these kinds of raids that we saw last week possible. I'm not so critical of the federal police for carrying out the raids. I accept that they were probably doing their jobs. And uh, um, as we've been hearing, it, there may well have been some kind of political involvement in there. But let's take the, what, the, what the federal police have been saying at face value, that there was nothing political. If there was nothing political, if they were simply uh, fulfilling their duties under the law, then clearly the law needs to change. And that's what we're, we need to start talking about. And Peter Gressy, we have about a minute left, but I wanted to ask you in terms of uh, uh, who determines uh, the violations of state secrets? Is there one centralized agency or can various federal agencies uh, decide to uh, conduct these kinds of raids in Australia? No, look, it's quite difficult to, to know quite what, what the, how the laws are, are, are coming into effect or coming into force. Um, I mean, let's, let, let's take a look at uh, the, the data retention laws, the metadata. And any number of, of more than 20 agencies, government agencies, can look into any Australian's metadata without a warrant. Now, they need to apply for a special uh, journalist warrant if they want to investigate journalist metadata in, in, in a search for sources. But otherwise, there is no, there is no uh, warrant system. They, they can look anywhere, um, anywhere that they want. Um, and I think that's the kind of scope that we're talking about. That's overreach. You talk to any lawyer, any civil rights activist, anyone who knows about the way the law operates, and they'll acknowledge that that's overreach. And we need to really start a vigorous conversation within this country about the, the limits of, of state power and, what, what, and, the lim and, and the kind of ways that we need to encourage and support press freedom and also the protection of whistleblowers, because ultimately these raids were uh, in the hunt for the, for the, for the sources of the, these stories, for the journalist sources, for the whistleblowers that felt that these stories needed to be told. Well, we have to wrap up right now, but we want to continue the vigorous discussion, and we're going to bring folks part two at democracynow.org under web exclusives. Peter Gresta, we want to thank you and ask you to stay for that part two discussion. UNESCO Chair in Journalism and Communications, University of Queensland, founding director of Alliance for Journalist Freedom, prison for more than 400 days. Also, Joseph Fernandez, a media law academic at Curtin University, Australia's correspondent for Reporters Without Borders. Stay with us. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.